All right, folks can see my screen. Slideshow mode, gonna move you up here. Okay, awesome. So this is on rain barrels, which I think is, you know, kind of apt for everything we've gone through this month. Um, I wanted to do this presentation because originally I thought that rain barrels were kind of a, like someday project for me in particular that, you know, if I wanted rain barrels, I'd have to spend hundreds of dollars on it and I'd probably have to hire somebody and it was going to be complicated and I don't know how long I want to live here. So is it really worth it? And it was just kind of stressful and I was really intimidated by the idea of rain barrels, I think. And then I went to a workshop at the Sierra Club Angeles chapter only about a month ago, and they really made it seem a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. And I thought, you know what, I think I can do it. And then I did it and it actually wasn't that bad. And I thought, you know, what, if I can do this with a little help, anybody can do it. So I want to show you what I learned how I did it, and just some other interesting facts, especially right now when we have all this rain going on. I think if the supplies are in the store, you could even run to the store, get your stuff, and have rain barrels up by this weekend before the next rain if you wanted to. So why do we need to collect rainwater? Well, actually, rainwater is a lot better for plants than city water. City water has a lot of chlorine, fluoride, and magnesium and other minerals if the water is hard. Rainwater is a lot softer and it's slightly more acidic. Large leaf trees, large leafy big green trees, if they have brownish yellow rims on the edge of the leaves, that's likely salt deposits and other mineral deposits from the city water that's coming out of your hose and it's affecting those trees. So rainwater is really ideal when possible. Southern California, most water agencies down here, not just metropolitan, uses Colorado River water and that's really salty. So it's heavily treated and that means it's really hard water and it's not great for plants. And that's also why a lot of farmers lobby metropolitan to get more Delta water, more state water project water because that water is not as hard as Colorado River water. So this is yet another reason why we need stormwater capture and catchment in Southern California or anyone that uses state water project water. We need more stormwater capture everywhere to reduce our dependency on the Delta and state water project water. Runoff collection, runoff water also collects pollution and trash. So a lot of times it's also animal feces, it's dog feces, and that's a huge proliferation of E. coli bacteria. Um, it gets cigarettes. Cigarettes are the number one most polluted item in the world. A lot of that gets picked up. All kinds of nasty, you know, oil and gas and freezing fluids from cars and anything else gross on the ground. It's all going to add up to our lakes, our rivers, our oceans. And if you've noticed, uh, the beaches are usually closed for about 10 days after it rains. So the more rainwater we collect, the less of it is going to be pushing yucky stuff out to our waterways. And lastly, in an emergency, in a really bad situation, in an earthquake, whatever, if you get shut off from tap water, you can sanitize your rainwater and you can drink it. So for LA in particular, you might have noticed it's kind of a concrete jungle. Why is LA so concrete? Well, 60% of rain in LA is runoff, so it's not captured for collection. That's really sad when you think about the storms we've had the last few weeks that, you know, I think I've heard about 26 billion gallons of water fell in the storm last weekend, not even the one this week, and 60% of that is not going to be captured. Um, and that's upsetting. So this is because in 1914, there was a huge flood and that cost about $10 million in damages, which today would be around $100 million. And we've actually heard that all of the storms we've had in January adds up to about a billion dollars in damages so far. But at the time, $10 million was a lot of money and then 15 people died. So the goal at the time was to remove flood water channel up the LA River and create building codes to move the water of the ocean as fast as possible. Development, population, climate change exploded since then, and now those policies are wasting billions of dollars 
and billions of gallons of water, you know, their priorities were different at the time. They didn't really expect the population to explode as much as it did and for climate change to make things as dry as they are. But here we are now and policies, they need vast improvements and it's going to take some time for Measure W, for everything else to catch up. Um, so we as individuals, what can we do? Well, besides lobbying and pushing for more stormwater capture, we can also install rain barrels. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I just feel like all these little things are in the way. No, but can I move this at all? Okay, great. So how much rainwater can be harvested? Well, a house with a 1500 square foot roof in an area that receives 12 inches of rain a year, which LA gets typically 12 inches of rain a year, they could collect 10,800 gallons of water. And a typical rain barrel is 55 gallons. So, you know, you could look at it as get a bunch of rain barrels or have a rain barrel, use some water, refill it. You know, in most places you can um, get multiple, multiple days of rain and have a chance to feed your garden in between. California, you kind of get heavy rain all at once and then not a lot for the next 10 months. So, you know, it's not ideal in that situation, but capture what you can, right? Schools, commercial buildings, bigger houses have roofs that are a lot bigger than 1,500 square feet. So you do the math. If one square foot can capture one inch of water, just kind of, you know, multiply it out. And there's potential to capture a lot of water. LA residents use 112 gallons per person per day of water, and they estimate that about 35% of that goes to landscaping. So if you capture 35% of 112 gallons, so that's roughly almost 40 gallons um, per day from stormwater, you know, that goes a long way in terms of savings. Typical annual rainfall average for LA is 12 inches a year. For Sacramento, it's 18 inches a year. For the Bay Area, it's 24 inches a year. For San Diego, it's 10 inches by the coast and inland up to 33 inches. And for Fresno, 13 inches. So it is pretty different, you know, depending on the area, but um, there's, there's quite a bit of capture potential there. Nope, sorry, too far. Nope, darn it. Okay. So obviously we've had a lot of rain in 2023. This month has been an extreme case and it's probably my guess by the end of the month is they are going to say that this was the one in a hundred year storm or that the total month was, I feel like Tuesday was, but I think we are going to see that that's what they'll decide by the end of the month. Or this could end up becoming our new normal with climate change. Well, we'll have to see how things go in the future. But for now, at least in the terms of the last hundred years or so, this was an outlier month. And um, these are the totals as of today, January 11th. So I threw some in there that I just thought were particularly interesting, like Strawberry Valley, which is near Eureka or Honeydew. Um, I also threw in the towns that I know some of you live in, so two inches in Lemon Grove, um, almost seven inches in Walnut Creek. Um, I'm around six inches where I live, um, so it's varied all over, three inches in Redlands, but, um, you know, we also have more storms coming up, and it's kind of been just all over the place. So we can really see that any region of California has been getting rain and has potential to collect some more. Let's talk about different ways to do that. So passive rainwater collection is a simpler way to not have to get out there and do anything once you've already, you know, done the initial action to not have to do anything more than that. And that's by setting up uh, landscaping designed to collect more water to the ground rather than the streets. So basically in a nutshell, you're digging a shallow pit of sorts and filling it with rocks like a dry rock riverbed or bioswales. And then the water has an easier time of falling down through the ground rather than hitting the street and runoff or kind of getting sloshy with the mud and then, uh, which is now a risk with mudslides. Having the rocks there really helps it go down where it needs to go. 
But let's also talk about active rainwater collection, which is uh, rain barrels. And I'm going to tell you how I installed them and what I did. So the very first thing you have to do is get someone to help you. You know, you need someone who can help you do the research, figure out where to buy it, uh, what do you need, what are the products, what's available near you. And then you need to inspect your land. Maybe you need someone to help supervise you. So Maggie was really good at supervising. And uh, that's really your step one. Uh, you definitely want to have a platform or something to put under your rain barrels because you're going to need most likely to put um, a water pail or a pitcher, something under there to collect the water out of there. If you put it straight on the ground, you're going to have a hard time fitting anything under the faucet, which is right at the bottom of it. So you want a platform of sorts. I'm really big on reusing things. I found this nasty pallet down the street. I noticed it had been sitting there for at least a year. So I took it. There were some invasive bugs in these corners, which I actually had to touch and get rid of them. And they were yucky. But I did it. And I dragged this nasty thing all the way to um, the spot where I wanted to put it. I decided ultimately it was not really the right shape. It's awkward and boxy. So after the rain, I'm going to chop it in half right through the middle here and then just stack it on top of each other. But for now, it's doing a good job. Then once you have all of your supplies, you're going to want to get up to the roof. I was too scared. So I asked someone for help. And this is some Fani. She's uh, out in the Porterville area. She's fantastic. And she is not afraid of climbing on roofs. So she she helped me out. So here she is getting up to the roof. Um, this one, this lower roof already has a gutter on it. So she went up here where uh, my neighbors have gutters, but they all stopped right before my place. So I don't have gutters. They do, but I don't. Um, so she was going to add gutters for me in addition to the whole rain barrel system. So if you don't have any gutters, this is where you're going to have to start. If you do have gutters, we'll get to what you do in a moment. But first, you're going to have to get up there and you're going to put gutters along the edge of your roof. And every foot or so, you need to add a hanger to clip them on. You're going to want a leaf screen over to keep leaves, leaves and other yucky stuff out. I hear raccoons and squirrels and even a rooster one time running around on the roof. So, you know, you don't want any of them in the gutters and you're going to attach them. And then if you already have an end cap, which is what you can see over here, you would remove it. If you don't, you're going to stick an end cap, which will be right here um, on the end of the gutter where you want the rain barrel to go, because then you're going to put the downspout there. So to add the downspout part. So here you can see she put up the gutter and then you're gonna have to cut a hole in the gutter where you want the water to come down. And then you put the drop outlet there. You need the hole that comes with the drop outlet to match the hole you just cut. And then you put the end cap on the edge of that drop outlet. So now it's facing downward. You're gonna secure that with a hanger. You're gonna caulk it, just make sure all the seals are good and the handy thing too is that where you can buy this in most stores, most hardware stores, they've got a diagram of everything you need. So you can just cross off your list and make sure you've got all the parts that you need. So you'll secure that with a hanger. And after you've sealed all of that, then you're going to start working your way down. So you're going to fit the overhang. Um, so it would not be advised to just go straight and drop down. You really want to kind of get snug as you can against the wall because in a big right and big windy times, especially here at the Santa Ana winds, you don't want these things to go flying. Um, just note this is not a power line. This is some old cable. So if this was a power line, you know, don't do it. But um, this is not power line. So you're going to need elbows to get to the corners. And um, these are usually A elbows. The B elbows make sure that they actually fit. And that's going to connect the pieces to, you know, fit the shapes of everything you need. And this is where algebra really comes into play. You got the 45 degrees. You might need a 90. So 45 plus 45 is 90. You're going to need two elbows. And uh, you'll be glad you went to, you finished math class for that. 
So then once you get that going and you've made that shape, then you just have to get this long piece of downspot here. Head up, heads up, this will not fit out the window of a regular car. You might need a bigger car, a truck, a hatchback, but you will get in trouble if you just stick it out your window, believe me. So you're gonna wanna put the downspout against the wall and then you're gonna secure it with some little straps. Once you put those straps in there, you just pop it in and then the rest of it is quick and simple, not that bad. While Samfani was doing the hard part, I found this really cool snake skin in the dirt and I wanted to show you because, you know, it looks pretty cool. And then, so she did the hard part. Here we go, we've got the downspout coming down. When you get to the length of the rain barrel, so you know, you don't want this to go all the way down to the ground. You want it to stop above the rain barrel. I knew I wanted it to be somewhere below the window so I could watch the water coming out because I thought that was pretty cool. So I said, all right, let's just stop it right here. And then there's a couple different options you have depending on the hardware stores near you, you can get different shapes of this. I liked that this had that kind of robot looking arm shape so I could bend it in any direction. Um, I wasn't sure how far against the wall this would be knowing that this thing is here, this like. It has to do with the Deonda's power thing. Yeah, the thing that covers up the power and the, the cords and all that, whatever that was, I knew that was gonna be in the way. So I thought I need something flexible. Yeah, that can go around that. So that was helpful. And then the I one telling him he wanted to one time that he couldn't. So anyway, so, so I'm gonna go over there and see what the deal is. Oh, I think someone's not on mute. Sorry, I thought you were talking to me. Um, just mute yourselves, folks. Yeah, and then you can also see too, this has a little filter to just keep pebbles and leaves and junk out of there. And it's nice and like right at my height so I can see what's in there and just clean it out, wipe it out, even just use your hand and pull the yucky stuff out. And then you can kind of bend it in any direction. I found that as this got heavier and full of water, it like kind of leaned back towards the wall. So I was glad that I had something I can kind of move that's flexible. So then to attach it to here, there's just some little flexible pieces and you screw a hole in and it's that simple and you're done. So you want to make sure that it's positioned to be over the rain barrel. And um, this is the rain barrel right here. So you can see water comes out, goes right in here. And you can see Symphony is very proud of herself and all the hard work. Good job, girl. So then you want to make sure you measure the rain barrel and you put a screen over it. Um, I don't have a screen on here yet. And I'm going to cut out some screen from window screen because you wanna make sure it's something that mosquitoes cannot get through, especially with our warm climates. This is, you know, peak mosquito breeding area. They carry West Nile virus, Zika in um, California and all kinds of funky diseases all around the world. So let's keep them out, keep the debris out so you don't clog it all up too and have to go fish yucky stuff out later. So you can just get a little screen. You can also buy any kind of mesh, but if you have a metal mesh, that's gonna get rusty. So you would want some kind of fabric mesh or really just window screen, that, that'll do the trick. And you can sew it in, you can hot glue it, you can, there's all kinds of ways of attaching it, super glue. So if you have multiple rain barrels, you're gonna wanna connect it via a snug tube. This tube did not come with the rain barrel. So I measured it um, for the inside diameter of this tube that I bought had to be the size of the outside of this tube. You know, you wanna make sure that it's not, you wanna make sure you measure the inside and outside of the tubes because that's also how they sell it. So I connected the overflow from one to the overflow of another one so that when this one fills up, the water will spill out through the tube and go to the second one. I learned this the hard way. This, when it's horizontal, means it's closed, so the water is not coming out. If it was the other way, the water would be slipping right out. That's, you know, your faucet where you're going to pour the water into your pitcher. So just make sure it's closed when it starts to rain. So on a rainy day, you want to make sure it's actually working. I was expecting there to be like a fire hose rush of water coming out. That wasn't really the case. It's kind of a trickle and a fast trickle if it's raining hard. You can't even see it in the photos. So I added a little image for you, but it's working. The water came out. 
and here's proof that it was raining. So I wish that water had been captured in my rain barrel, but alas, not so much. So what I'm trying to do now is get a little, a little creative with it. I thought, hmm, even after that big, huge storm where my house flooded, I still didn't, I only got about a third of my rain barrel full of water. So I put some buckets outside to collect more rainwater and I'm gonna pour that into the rain barrel in addition. And then because you know it's easier to pour from a faucet than from a bucket, I'm gonna take that faucet and then fill old water bottles, old jugs, fill that up with rainwater um, and just set it aside for a hot, dry summer day. Um, out, out, of the out of the sun though, you gotta keep it somewhere shady and sealed. But keep collecting extra rainwater and throwing it into the rain barrel because why not? So what I have are collapsible rain barrels. And I like these because A, they're only $25. So that's nice. And um, they're great for renters because you, you know, they're not permanently attached to anything. If you were renting and oh uh no, darn it. If you were renting and you had this structure, I mean, I think it might be worth the risk to put it up anyway, but if your landlord is really mean, then don't risk it. Um, but you can have, you know, you can put them under the corner of a spot that doesn't have a gutter at all. Or you can attach a hose to a gutter if they had a gutter and the downspot's already going in the street. There are options there. So either way, these are collapsible. These aren't big and heavy. You can just shrink them in and take it with you when you move. So these are a really great option for renters and they're 25 bucks. Um, that was at Walmart, but all over the internet, you can get them pretty cheaply. And then, um, and they, like I said, it did not come with a screen. So you'll have to add a little screen. These collapsible ones do not qualify for rebates, but also they're cheap enough that, you know, you don't really need a rebate for these. So Oya systems are gonna be my next adventure in rain barrels. I'm gonna do, wait until the rain is over because the ground is just so heavy and saturated right now. I'm gonna wait till the ground is a little drier and it's easier to dig. But this is really cool, one of those feats of nature. So an Oya system is basically this little, little guy you see here, this round shaped terracotta pot and then it's got the dome at the top or the kind of um, cylindrical shape. Essentially, terracotta is porous if you don't paint it. As long as you don't paint it and it's in its original form, terracotta is porous and it's not waterproof. So if you connect these terracotta pots to, by, by um, they've got them, they come already with little holes and faucets and spigots, and you can put a tube and connect that to the faucet of your rain barrel. So as the rain barrel is full, it fills in your Oya right here. And then the Oya, you would plant in the ground right next to your plants, and the plants will suck the water from the Oyas as needed. The Oya will release only the amount of water that's needed and the plants will only take what's needed, not more, not less. It's an amazing little feat of science that it just knows exactly what to do. So as long as you keep putting water in your rain barrel, the plants can keep taking. So my plan for this is I know eventually I'm gonna run out of that rain barrel water, you know, sometime in the spring or summer. I asked, I made sure that you can do this. It's definitely okay to throw your old pasta water, your veggie boiling water, you can throw that in there. Um, it's not going to hurt the plants if you didn't salt your pasta. So, you know, you might think, oh no, I really want to salt my pasta. Well, okay, you don't want to put salt water in your garden. You can always put salt on your pasta afterwards. You know, it's up to you, these sacrifices, is it worth it? I'm I'm willing to not salt my pasta and uh, take that water and dump it in here. Um, the 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 minerals from the starch from the pasta and vegetables, whatever you're boiling, are actually good for the plant, so that's fine. So you can throw that in there. And then I also suggest putting a bucket under your um, faucet in the bathtub in the shower while you're waiting for the water to get warm enough. Um, take that water and you can also throw that in your rain barrel year round. So you've always got water flowing to your Oya. And if you take showers somewhat regularly, you know, you've got a bucket of water to throw in there whenever you shower, uh, whenever anyone in your home showers. So that's always a nice option. 
And it's pretty great that they know exactly what to take. And again, make sure you have a cat supervising the whole system. It's really pretty necessary. So here are some tips for rain barrels. Um, it's really important that your, your rain barrel is UV resistant or even just painted a darker color because that's gonna prevent algae growth. You know, if you've got a white colored rain barrel and it's pretty thin and transparent, the sun is gonna beat down on that and it's gonna get algae. And that algae is great for the plants, but it's usually pretty stinky and you're not gonna like that. Your neighbors might complain. So if it's dark, that's gonna prevent the algae growth and it'll prevent evaporation. And then like Penelope was saying, her barrels are in the sun and that plastic started to degrade and crack. Um, keeping them protected will help with that. So if you, if you don't wanna paint it darker, you can always put something in front of it. You can put a screen, like a sunscreen, I think I'm probably going to put bushes in front of mine because I also think it's ugly and I don't want to look at it. So, you know, just making sure that the sun is not getting at it. It's really important to have a closed screen because you want to prevent the mosquitoes. Like I said, you also want to prevent debris from getting in there or rodents and animals from trying to get to that water too. It needs an overflow option. I mean, the water could always just come back up through the top, but that's kind of messy. And then you're going to get stagnant water you're going to get mud, so you need the, the extra water to go somewhere. Um, the OES system is a great option for that, but if you don't want to do that, you can take a hose, a tube, and then I suggest burying it underground near your plants so that it can be, you know, feed the plants right away. You, If you do that, you're also preventing puddles forming um, on the ground and getting mosquitoes. Um, or mold or, you know, stinky air, stinky stuff. Um, but if you feel like the area you live in is really rainy, it's going to flood. If you're in a high rain area, you can always point it out to the street if you think that's necessary. But generally in California, um, I would suggest burying it. Some people attach hoses to the barrels um, faucet to do that. You can, so like an actual hose where you would then be able to go reach as far as you can and you've just got a little, um, like a shut off valve on that, that's always an option. Um, I used a flexible downspout, like I said, I liked that robot arm so that I could get it right over the rain barrel where it worked for me, but you can also use a regular downspout and then just cut a hole wherever you want it and stick a tube or a hose in that part. Surface tension will actually have most of the water stick around the edges of the downspout so it'll go straight into your hose. It's not, for the most part, it won't flow out to the bottom of the downspout. It'll find the hose and find its way to your rain barrel. That's a pretty cool little feature of, uh, night, of nature and science. So again, you want a solid foundation under it to hold it up because it can get pretty heavy. Cinder blocks are a great idea because it's a nice height, but um, you might want, if you're going to put a cinder block in there, you might want to move the cinder block vertically and then fill it with sand so that critters don't move in. You might not want to put your hand down by that faucet to collect the rainwater if you know that mice or rats are living in there, unless you like mice and rats. I mean, do you, whatever you want. But um, if you fill it vertically with sand, then you're not going to get critters living in there. Um, algae smell and mosquitoes and then failing parts are the most common problems. With bees, again, it's just about keeping it out of the sun. That alone will prevent most of these problems. Um, but if you're still finding you have a mosquito problem, you can get something called biological mosquito control. And they're these donut shaped little tablets. They usually come in like a pack of 30, but one tablet is good for one barrel for an entire year. So you just throw this little thing in your barrel, kills any mosquitoes, prevents them from getting there. It will not hurt your plants. It will not hurt your pets. And then if your barrel gets dried up and it's just sitting there, the next time it gets water, it'll reactivate when it gets wet again and you're good to go. It's really pretty simple. So if you wanna get advanced with your rain barrels, um, a cistern is a much bigger rain barrel. It's great for a large roof or for something commercial, but those are a lot more expensive typically about $250 to $300 for a cistern. You can also use PVC pipe, like you can, well, kind of see here, to connect multiple rain barrels. Um, 
it for the overflow to have them directed it to a specific spot. You can get a one tenth pump if you want to get fancy with it and have the suction kind of force the water out of there to use as a stronger hose if you have some heavy duty gardening to do. It's definitely not necessary, but if you want to. Enviroscape LA, they're a group of environmental landscapers. They can help you with advanced projects like what you see here or hydroponic ponds. This is a hydroponic pond here, or hydroponics, aquaponics, but you can also have like a cute little pond that's hydroponic. One of the, the an example they have by their landscaper, Mike Garcia, he has a rainwater harvest fed pond that grows hydroponic edible plants. So he's got plants growing on top of the pond floating around and there are koi in the pond. So the koi eat the mosquitoes. Then those koi fish poop that poops nitrogen feeds the plants. And then it's really, and then the plants keep, um, pretty, they keep the algae out. So it's really an enclosed system that maintains itself. All he ever needs to do is occasionally add some fish food, but really the entire thing is just closed circuit and you don't need to do anything else to maintain it. So it's pretty exciting. That's gonna be my next adventure after the Oyas. And um, I'll report back this summer with anything I learned from that. And um, pretty excited about that. For uh, basic maintenance, you really wanna sweep out your gutters. Depending on where you are in the country, you know, you might wanna do it every three months, but in California, you can really get away with sweeping out your gutters right before rainy season, which is starts in October, probably a few times during rainy season, because with this strong rain, like the one we had uh, with all that wind too, it knocked stuff down. So we probably got junk in the gutters from the rain itself. Um, so you might wanna clean it out like right now after a big rain is a good idea. And then again, after rainy season, you wanna inspect the valves for micro leaks. Um, and that can again be done <coughs> before, during and after the rainy season. You wanna clean barrels with a bristle brush on the walls of the barrel, but that's really only as needed. And that's really only if you see the water decline or if it's getting stinky, but generally if it's, you know, well-maintained in a dark area, you might never need to clean out the walls of the, of the rain barrel. It's probably going to be fine. Uh, if your collapsible rain barrel, like the one I have gets a hole in it, you can fix that with a tent repair kit. If your plastic barrel, it's a small minor crack that can be repaired with silicone gutter caulk, but if it's um, a much bigger one, you know, probably can't replace all of it. So it can get a little expensive, but there are a lot of rebate programs out there. MyRainPlan.com, I'll say it again, MyRainPlan.com will help you find rebates and also supplies and anything you need anywhere in the United States. So you can just plug in your address. They'll tell you what kind of programs are available near you, um, what stores, where do they sell it? So Home Depot is the closest store to me and they only have the downspout extensions and gutter stuff. They don't sell rain barrels. They didn't know what those were. Um, it all depends on where you live and where you're going, but that website's very helpful. If you live in the Metropolitan Water District area, you can check out SoCalWaterSmart.com. That's where I got this little um, graph right here, SoCalWaterSmart.com, and they'll give you a list of rebates for rain barrels. And also turf replacement and other water savers at um, BeWaterWise.com. They've got great tips and ideas, all kinds of stuff. And because I live in LA, SoCalWaterSmart.com alerted me that LADWP offers these rebates. Um, so for a 50 gallon, or a larger rain barrel that has to be hard plastic. So not the one I have, but a hard plastic one um, that's 50 gallons or bigger. Um, you know, you can get $35 up to $350 back on these cisterns. So you they do have very specific guidelines. Like I said, uh, the collapsible one didn't qualify. You have to have gutters um, on the entire side of the building to qualify and um, I think you can only yeah you can only get a rebate once so if you try to pull a fast one on them and apply again a few years later 
not going to work. So they have some specific requirements and they want photographs as proof. So read it thoroughly before you invest, but it's definitely a great um, opportunity. So let's say you're looking at this and you're like, Katie, I know that you used a cat and a lady and you were good to go, but I don't think I can do that. So there are definitely folks out there who can help you. Um, you can search environmental landscaper and so wherever you are, environmental landscaper, and you can find someone who can help with you or even just a handy person. A lot of handy people are able to um, do some of this stuff. You can check out the American Rainwater Catchment Systems Association website, arcsa.org, and they have a section, Need Help in Your Area, and they will help you find someone who can help you wherever you are. Um, again, that's the American Rainwater Catchment Systems Association, and they'll help you find someone. If uh, that doesn't work, you can always contact your local Sierra Club chapter and ask them who they recommend for environmental landscaping because we all know somebody. And then if you're in the LA area, I recommend Greener Way Associates. Um, and I listed here some other things that they offer. These were the folks who initially made me think, oh, hey, you know what? I can do this mostly myself. This isn't as difficult and complicated as I thought. So this is about how we can do it ourselves as individuals. I, I do want to talk, of course, about, you know, rain barrels and policy, catchment policy in California. So someone said, oh, I, I want to capture rain until it's illegal. So this is, let me clarify the illegal part. So rainwater collection was illegal in California until 2012 with the adoption of the Rainwater Capture Act of 2012. And that wasn't to prevent rainwater capture for homeowners, but to prevent commercial industries, you know, big companies from disrupting natural flows to watersheds from mass capture projects. So in case some private corporation said, hey, let's uh, build a massive cistern or like fill a whole parking lot with cisterns and take all the rainwater for ourselves and then sell it to people at expensive prices. This was to prevent things like that, where people where private companies could take so much water that it would affect things like the Delta or any watershed or any, I mean, not necessarily for environmental reasons, probably for municipal reasons, but nonetheless, you know, preventing um, flows from watersheds. So that was the original intent, but then they thought, you know what, let's, let's let homeowners and smaller businesses collect it for personal use. So that's why it's no longer illegal. The Los Angeles MS4 permit law permit for low impact development ordinances and green streets policies. They actually are encouraging it by um, allowing permittees to implement the requirements of the permit um, with specific strategies and control measures and really doing what they can to kind of work with the water boards to collect more, but in a sustainable way. So a little bit about these, LA, for LA County at least, lots of counties in California have some version of this, but this is a specific ex example that for low impact development requirements, it's part of the law now um, for Title 12. So they've got, they have plans now um, and intentions for new builds, new um, newer construction projects to, um, to safely um, and sustainably collect water and have other um, really impressive projects that um, have low impact. So if the they have projects for non-residential development, so big commercial or industrial projects, and then non-designated projects, so like somewhere in between quasi projects, they have requirements for them as well, but I'm gonna hone in on residential developments of four units or less. So that would be a single family home, um, maybe a duplex or um, just a, a residential unit of four or residential development of four units or less. And the law now is for any new construction of these, they must implement a minimum of two of the following best management practices. So they have to pick two from this list that can include permeable porous pavement. Um, Sydney talks about that all that time, kind of like the, I think you called it a soap city or soak city. 
but you know, pavement that um, water can go through. And the requirement there is that 50% or more of that ground is porous. They also include downspout ratting. So that means rain barrels or cisterns that have to store at least 200 gallons of water, which can be about four rain barrels or one big cistern. It includes rain gardens or stormwater planters. So those also have to be, they also have to hold and treat 200 gallons and then be able to infiltrate 200 gallons of water um, into the ground in a 48 hour period. So Sydney, I think when Tom was talking about that, that time and it wasn't super clear and you were a little confused, I think this is what he was talking about that if you're going to have a rain garden or stormwater planter for these new builds, that water can't just sit there in the ground. It can't stagnate because of the mosquitoes. The water needs to be able to move down into, um, you know, the deeper soil into the groundwater basin um, within a 48 hour period. So that's what he was talking about. Another possibility is diverting runoff. So the impervious surfaces like concrete must drain to porous surfaces at a ratio of two to one or a minimum of 90% of the untreated impervious area has to be routed towards vegetated areas or a water quality project. So basically, um, if you have a driveway, if you have a parking lot, it has to be slanted or sloped or shaped in some way that is gonna send all of that, um, that water, not to the street, not to um, storm drains, but send it to the gardens, to the um, stormwater planters, the rain gardens, the porous pavement. It has to go in that direction now for any new build. You can also include dry wells and those also must infiltrate 200 gallons in a 48 hour period. There can be landscape irrigation, which must have a minimum of two 15 gallon trees to be planted. Um, so that means a tree of a certain size that's going to grow and then those have to be planted and maintained. So you can't just plant it and you know, let it die. They have to be planted and maintained 10 feet or less from the impervious surfaces. So planting a tree not far from that concrete sidewalk or driveway so that all of the water runs down to that tree and helps the tree um, grow and maintain. And I know that's been a fight with an HOA for me that they don't want those tree roots to then grow and um, you know fight with the sidewalk, but I think overall it's worth it. And lastly, these can also include, include green roofs. So, you know, putting um, green plants and all of that on your roof to um, reduce heat and also create more oxygen. So LA is coming a long way. A lot of counties, a lot of cities um, regionally are coming a long way in California with these um, projects. These are now requirements of new developments. So if we continue on this path, things are gonna get a lot better. I'll share my sources with you. Um, Diego Wuthrick, I hope I'm saying his name right, uh, was a big help with a lot of this. And some funny Hunter, she's based in Porterville also does work in LA. She helped with um, installation. She also sells houses. So, you know, if you need a realtor. And then the American Rainwater Catchment System is where you can find rebates and other materials and things that you might need. Here's their website. Um, and then these are my other sources. So at this point, I will see if um, folks have any questions or comments. So, Jan, I see your hand up, and then I'll check. Yeah, the chat. I'm, I'm curious as to you know that cute little uh, gadget that you could rotate the white uh, flexible piece. It's it's a certain height above where the the filter is. Did you have trouble with splash back against your house? Nope. 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 That's probably also because I have that cloth rain bar rain barrel, so I kind of shaped it down so that's oh. kind of concave. So it slopes right down there. Um, I think if I had a hard plastic one, that's definitely possible. And I probably would have pushed it a little further away. But okay. also the the sagginess of that cloth rain barrel means it, it kind of swells in the middle and then it leaned back a little more than I thought, which is fine. But um, yeah, that what's, helped with What's it. the life expectancy of, of that flexible um, rain barrel? Um, I think as long as you keep it out of the sun, it's going to last a, lot, a bit longer. It didn't say... 
Okay. But it's also really easy to take off and um, reinstall a new one. I think it costs about 10 bucks. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Great. Yeah, uh, Sydney. Uh, first of all, I want to say way to go on um, the rain harvesting. Yeah. I mean, you're you're just like me. And like my dad was kind of cracking up. My mom says hello, by the way. Hi. 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 Hello, everybody. Hi, Diana. I was going to. Beautiful smile. I was going to ask. Well, so first of all, no offense, but I could not comprehend all of that information. I mean, it, it sounds difficult to me, but like one of my questions is, um, how do you clean out your gutters before the, the, uh, the rain? Because like the other thing too is like I've noticed when it doesn't rain for a while or even a few days, the roof gets dirty. And sometimes like when it rains, I like to wait a little bit to put my containers out. So I don't, I mean, like, is it bad if the water gets dirty or like, like how do people clean off their roofs and in their um their gutters yeah so in terms of it getting dirty no all of that organic plant matter is good for your plants it's just a question of will it get clogged and gunked up and then like not be able to get all the way down there um or will it get stuck in a layer in there somewhere and get moldy and stinky Ugh. um so you don't want any of that um <clears throat> It is the hard part is I'm going to have to get brave enough to get on a ladder and go up there or just call some Fani and ask her to come back and then get up there. And I definitely recommend wearing eye protection and something over your nose because you never know what's in there and mice carry hantavirus and they're yucky. Oh. So, you know, you don't want to breathe that in. But when you get up there, you can even just put on a glove and just go like this and get all the yucky stuff out or you can take a little dust broom and just do that um if it's really bad and it's like moldy and soft and you know stuck in there you might need to scoop it out um but if you do it regularly enough it shouldn't be that bad so you're gonna want to clean that out and then you said uh and then in terms of it going all the way down um that downspout extension mine had a little filter on it to prevent yucky stuff from getting in there right. You can just do the same thing. Um, it actually snaps off the one that I had in particular. So you can snap that off, let the stuff fall out, clean it out a bit, and then just snap it back on too. Well, I would think that if you put a like a porous screen on top of the rain barrel, then it's going to catch any solid matter that goes in there and, and the rain will still be able to go through the screen. And the other idea that I have, I don't know if this would be a bad idea, but like, let's say if I had a rain barrel, right? What if somehow I had it on something where either I could just roll it away or move it for a period of time and then just let the water come out of the gutter for like 30 minutes and then put it back under? Like, is that possible at all? Like, are it's they really, really heavy, heavy to move? It's really heavy. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very heavy, first of all, heavy. but why do you, why do you, why do you need to move it? Well, I just figure it might be a way to let, like when it rains, like it might be a way to just let it naturally clean out. And then after 30 minutes of the water, just oh. out of there, put it back under. Oh, that's, okay. that's, that's an idea. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not even necessary. Um, <laughs> I really don't think it's going to get that bad. It's, I mean, it's not like we have tons of leaves and trees here. Like I'm picturing a place like New England, where I grew up, there are millions of trees and they have so many leaves and it's yucky, but here we don't have a ton of that. And um, I think you're fine with just, and the guy who explained all this to me, he said he only does it once a year and he's yeah, fine. that's all I do. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, the, Jan. The, oh, we'll the technical you. stuff is like hard for me to understand, so. Technical stuff, I can walk you through again. There are a lot of step-by-step -step instructions out there, diagrams, the American Rainwater Catchment Society, their or association, they are very into this. They've got diagrams. Um, there's a lot out there that you could review before you go do it. And I'm always happy to help if anyone um, has questions. It's not that bad. The hardest part is just and, and, and my parents say that they know it all. I don't know how they do, they but they, <laughs> well, Daddy. my dad says he knows it all. I don't know how though, but maybe because he gardens. Research. Oh, really? Yes, he watches oh. YouTube. Yeah. 
Yeah. He said he did the research. I don't know how, but. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to check the comments. And Wes says $25 is his budget. So I also suggest there are plenty of groups out there that can give away some of the supplies. So the Sierra Club Angeles chapter, they actually gave me my rain barrels. And then Symphony gave me one that's broken, but I'm going to I'm going to find a way to fix it. Um, so Sierra Club Angeles chapter, they have the collapsible ones to give away free for now. I think they've got about 20 of them left. So Wes, if you're interested, um, reach out to Charming where I can put you in touch. Um, the other supplies depends on what you have already. If you already have gutters, then you really just need the extension, which was like 10 bucks. Um, if you need the whole gutters, downspout, all of that, that can come out to $150 for the side of a house. Depends on how big the space is, what you're doing. If you can do all four sides, that's ideal. Um, I could not do that. One side will do it for me. But um, there are ways to make it cheap. And then actually, um, I saw... 20 rain barrels for free on Craigslist and they were up there for a good week or two so um, check check free places check the next door app Craigslist Facebook marketplace upcycle thread up all of those things check all those places first because this is one of those things that some people don't want to move with them if you sell your house you move you don't want to necessarily take it with you and who knows if the next people want it they should want it but if they don't you know, so check the free sources for that. And then Lionel says, oh, Tree People has great water, great resources on water conservation, stormwater capture. That's absolutely true. Their big thing is um, rainwater gardens, trees, everything. They, they've got it all. So they're fantastic. Definitely check out Tree People. Um, Cynthia says one of the groups in Santa Clara County is doing seminars on hydro aquaponics. Ooh. And yep, she's got tree people up there too. So that's fantastic. And yeah, Lionel, especially you living in the valley, we get a lot of water here. You should definitely get a rain barrel. And Wes is right. YouTube will teach you everything you ever needed to know. So a lot of things out there. Um, and yeah, Wes, I'll take the last slide and put that in the, um, in the folder for this group, the working group folder. I'll throw that in there. And then I'll include that folder in the weekly email and I'll include um, Charming's contact info if anyone in the LA area wants a free rain barrel. Any more questions, comments? Okay, so next week we will we'll talk again about all of the, oh, I'm gonna turn off the recording now.